Next question is from The Real Rashton. Is occlusion training a waste of time, or does it have a place in a routine to insert intermittently? Hell no, it's not a waste of time. Man, this is one of those weird, like, this is the last time that I can remember where I heard something in fitness that was super weird, and I was really yeah. skeptical, and then it turned out to be true. And it has a lot of value. <laughs> you know, it was, the first, weird. it was the very first mind pump tip that I ever gave on episode one. Oh, was it? Yeah. I, oh, I, yeah. I recently watched that. It, this one never aired, right? This was the one that we did with Craig Caperso years uh, years ago before mind pump started. Oh, this is the one at the house, right? Yeah, yeah. We're at the house, and you, Sal, talked about the decline of testosterone in young men, and then I brought occlusion training. And at that time, it was so new, and we were all kind of questioning it and talking about the science to support it and then kind of applying it ourselves. But I found tremendous value in it. Um, the The only thing that I would caution people of is that it's uh, there's so much value in it that you can start to neglect traditional strength training, which I don't think that it, it trumps traditional no, it strength training. Mm. I think it's a nice, <coughs> excuse me, it's a nice supplement to it. Uh, but if you start to re uh, replace your traditional strength training and you start doing mostly occlusion training, I think you'll you'll lose some of the benefits that you would get from it. Yeah. So essentially, how it works is you uh, you tie off a limb and and you you tie off an, enough, not so much that you lose feeling, but you tie off enough so that you occlude blood outflow. Right. So I if I do it to my arm, right, I'd go in my upper arm and knee wraps are usually what you would use. And you do some curls, and blood gets into the muscle, but less blood comes out of the muscle because it's occluded. And so you start to get this really deep, intense burn. It burns. And this extreme, oh, man. And this extreme pump. Like, it, it's an extreme pump like you've never experienced before, but it's also very painful. And what happens is it simulates heavy training to the body. So even though you're using, and you can't use heavy weight with this because when the burn kicks in, you, you, you lose function. You're just all of a sudden like, oh my God, I can't do another rep. But what it does is it actually stimulates the fast twitch muscle fibers in a similar way to heavy weight. So what are the, and also the extreme pump itself probably induces some, some muscle growth. So what are the benefits of this? Well, the benefits are I can train with really light weight and, and actually get a decent muscle building signal, man, th talk about the value for someone that's injured, right? Well, that, so. That's where this this originally came from yes. was with athletes. And I want to say it was hockey was where they, they first started doing this research around hockey players with like uh, knee injuries. So, uh, I mean, I didn't, I didn't know about uh, occlusion training as a trainer. This wasn't until mind pump had started. Did, did I get introduced to this? Um, but boy, I would have used the shit out of it as a, as a trainer. Cause I, many times I had clients fresh off of going through physical therapy yeah. and I had to do really, really lightweight and slow and controlled type of stuff mm -hmm. with them. And had I understood or knew about occlusion training back then, I would have found it as an incredible tool as a trainer and coach for rehabbing a client. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because, if you want to min minimize impact on the joint, it's great. Like it's, it's a great rehab tool. Uh, to be able to still address, you know, muscle hypertrophy. Uh, and also I look at it too. There's, it's interesting because you said like um, exercise, it sort of mimics, you know, uh, some of the exercise. So I'm thinking too of, of like a, a sauna, same thing. Like they, you know, how, how your body heats up and then, uh, you know, you get all the benefits of that. It, it simulates uh, basically some of the benefits you get from exercise and your body naturally heating up. Uh, and producing, uh, you know, these benefits. Yeah. Now, now self-experimentation, because when we first started the show and when you talked about this, Adam, you and I went through this period where we were just messing with it mm -hmm. just to see what it would do. And the body part that I was most consistent using it on was my calves because historically my calves have been very stubborn. Uh, they just, didn't, you know, don't respond like the rest of my body. I know Adam, you know, same thing. And here's what I noticed from it. Like my calves, which Basically, we're not going to grow. I mean, I know. I trained them, and they, that was it. They were stuck. I added almost a quarter of an inch to them by adding occlusion. Oh, so I, that's where I saw the same benefit. Which fact, is amazing. I'll send Andrew. I actually have a picture of you and I uh, doing a, a calf flex-off oh in the original studio yeah. when we were actually doing this. So um, that's I've, I've used it mostly. There. I've used it for my arms, too, but... 
um, I saw the most value with my calves at being able to add volume without doing as much damage to the to the muscle. Yes. Right? Now so, you, you guys gained a few more veins. I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Fuck off, dude. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Kinkles. <laughs> Kinkles. Andrews. I. I. Now here's the deal. Uh, I. I experimented with it a lot. I even had some clients do it. You can overdo it. You could definitely overdo it and of overtrain. Course. It should not replace your traditional training. I don't think you should use it until you've built up a good amount of volume and frequency in normal training. It doesn't make any sense because it's still not as effective as traditional training. But let's say you've reached a particular point. You're hitting your, your sweet spot. You've been working out consistently for a while. You've got good volume, good frequency, and you want to add one more little trick, just kind of squeeze out a little bit more muscle growth or shape. Uh, in my experience, uh, throwing it in once a week was plenty. Once or twice a week, and I would literally do three sets. That's it. Any more than that, and I noticed then, then it would start to take away, and I'd have to like replace traditional exercises, in which case it didn't make any sense. Um, I did it for, uh, I experimented for quads, hamstrings, calves, and arms. The downside is you can't occlude really the torso, so I can't do it for <laughs> chest or back. Or, you know, glutes. You could. It wouldn't go over too well. Yeah, I don't know how the hell you would <laughs> tie off your neck, you know? Hello. Yeah, how would you do that? Um, but it, 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 it's very, very painful. You have never felt a burn. I mean, it is literally unbearable. I, I, when I'm done with the set, I rip the things off. and I, Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's, like it's a, another great tool, right? Uh, kind of like similar to the question about the elevated heels thing. It, it shouldn't uh, replace traditional strength training. Um, but I found tremendous value in it complementing my traditional routine. And then had I known about it as a trainer and coach back when I was training clients, for sure, I would have used this a lot because I trained a lot of, I mean, a lot of your clients uh, dealt with pain and surgery. I think that was uh, very, very common as a trainer to get clients like that. And so had I known about occlusion training back then, it would probably have been something I used on a fairly regular basis with clients. Oh yeah. Think about it. Like, you know, I, you know, I, when I work out, let's say if I squat, it's probably with 300 pounds, right? But let's say I have knee injury. I can't, you know, getting a workout with body weight now for me would be very difficult. It's too light. But if I occlude myself, oh, yeah. I bet body weight, I could get, I could, you know, send a little bit of a muscle building signal because even with body weight, the burn and everything would be insane and my muscles would eventually fatigue and fail very quickly. So it's a, a valuable tool. I would say use it once a week, maybe twice a week, only after. Well, we wrote a guide for this. You've been so we do. We have a guide that explains yeah. it. And then I think we did a YouTube video, didn't we? Do mm -hmm. a YouTube video? That kind yeah, of we've done a couple YouTube videos, and then we have a full guide on how to the sets and reps and how we would actually implement it. Exactly.